Hi everyone, I wanted to go through and describe how to extract five different textures out of ZBrush. The diffuse, the normal, specular, ambient occlusion, and the cavity maps. And those five maps are what we're going to bring into Photoshop and composite for our game textures. Alright, so let's get going here. Um, I've got uh, this head, uh, poly painted, and if I can click on this um, paintbrush here, I can demonstrate that it's just poly painted. That's the same thing as coming down here to poly paint and turning colorize off. All right, so first step, I gotta make sure that I have UVs on this head here. So we can go to UV map, and because this is not ghosted, that tells me that there's UVs. We, sh we can also go to texture map and press new from UV map, and that's gonna show us that we've got UVs on there. And there's no horizontal lines, there's no vertical lines in this image here, which tells me that it's fairly error-free. No errors there, so that's a good sign. I can turn that off. Oops, turn off. And uh, now I can go and preset what I want these textures to be at. Right now it's 2048. If I want a 10,000 or 1024 pixels, if I want a 4K, 2K, I'll leave it at 2K, but this is how you set that. And if you're crazy, you can do uh, something even larger, like 8,000. All right, so also you're familiar with padding, uh, the number of pixels around your UV shells. You can adjust that right here with your UV map border. Okay, so now we can go down to texture map. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, I'm gonna capture all the colors that I've painted on the surface of these polygons. There is 11.3 million polygons in this head and each one of those polygons has an RGB color to it. I'm going to capture that by pressing New from Poly Paint, and that's going to be mapped to the UVs that I provided. And you can see the width and height there is 2048 by 2048. Okay, how do I get that into the texture palette? I press Clone Texture, that puts it over here, and then I can export it right there. If I want to flip my texture, because remember, ZBrush does that, um, to textures and normals and displacements. Um, we can either handle that here with a flip horizontal, flip vertical, or we can do it in Photoshop. I'm going to take care of it in Photoshop. So export, and then place it someplace that I can find it. And I've, I'm going to call it uh, Head Diffuse. I've already got it saved right there. Okay. Next up is Displacement. So um, Displacement in ZBrush is created using uh, a projection method between the lowest subdivision and the highest subdivision. So let's go to geometry, and I'm at level eight, and remember there's um, 11 million polygons in this head. So it's going, if I, if I press this button right here, create displacement map, it's gonna do a comparison between the lowest subdivision and the highest subdivision. So I wanna go down to lo low level one, and it's gonna do a comparison between one and eight. If I had this set at say four, and then I went and cr pressed this button, create displacement map, it's going to do a comparison between level 4 and level 8. And I don't want that. I want the full spectrum. So I'm going down to level 1, and I'll say create displacement map. Before I do that, I want adaptive and smooth UVs on. Create displacement map. It'll take about 20 seconds. I'm going to stop the video while that um, processes. Okay, it populated this window here with the displacement map, and to get that over into the alpha palette over here, I'm going to say clone displacement. There it is. Same routine. If I want to go up here to alpha and flip it vertically or horizontally, I could do it there, or just directly export and manipulate that in Photoshop. That's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to call this one head displacement. I already got it saved. Okay, next up normal map and it's the same routine it's doing a projection between level one and level eight so here is level one and level eight if I have this up on level eight the highest subdivision whatever your subdivision may be and I try to click this button create normal map it's gonna give me an error saying hey it can't do it um, you gotta have your lowest or lower subdivision level active okay so come up here slide that down to level one and then make sure that Tangent and Adaptive are on before you, you press Create Normal Map. A quick word about Tangent, I have some examples of what a Tangent looks like. So here is a Tangent Normal Map. 
it's got four colors uh, blue magenta green and cyan okay so those four colors this is a tangent normal map and let's compare that to a world space or object space normal map and it's got a lot more colors so this is an object space normal map if you do not back here in zbrush if you do not turn this on you're going to get an object space normal map if you turn it on you're going to get a world space this is important because 3d studio max over here um, we set up our normal map our normal maps and our game textures using tangent space uh, normal maps so that's why I'm going to choose this to be on uh, and if you choose if you want you want to flip the G um, you can do that I know I, I know some game artists do that okay so create normal map it's, it's a lot like the displacement it's going to take the same amount of time about 30 20 seconds I'll pause until that's done all right here's the normal map same drill if I want to get over in the texture palette I press clone normal map that puts it over here and then I can click on that and export it okay so export and call this one head normal right there already got it saved okay next up uh, why don't I turn these off because I've already acquired them Okay, minimize those rollouts turn that off minimize that and uh, Let's come up here, and I want to go to masking, because I want to create a cavity map. And we need to be at the highest subdivision to do that. So slide that back up, level 8. I can turn these off. Okay, so we go to masking, which is right here. And what I want to do is mask by cavity. And the default setting is 0 is not enough, so I'm just going to type in 25 and see what I get and I'll say mask by cavity take about 20 to 30 seconds at this level okay so here it is mask by cavity you can see it changed if I hold the control button down and drag a rectangle that will clear the mask just like if I press this clear button let me grab that again mask by cavity okay there it is um, I don't think it's dark enough and so I want to increase my intensity I'll clear that and I'll type in 50 here and then mask by cavity again okay it's a little darker and now I can say create alpha that will take a little bit of time I'm gonna pause the video until that's done okay and um, when it got when it processed it placed it over here in the alpha channel and I can click on this and export it and call this head cavity there it is right there just a quick word about cavity if you wanted to change the distance from um, where it starts and where it ends you can go into your cavity profile and manipulate this uh, maybe make it a little more sharper by making a curve like this you can blur it a little bit with this preset um, I just want to give you the heads up that you've got some manipulation that you can do here uh, to increase the quality of your cavity and once you, you you create it and you save it then you can clear it and then let's make the ambient occlusion now here's the thing about ambient occlusion <laughs> processor intensive and I want to share with you what kind of computer I'm running right now we'll go to control panel and system Okay, I got a uh, 64-bit operating system, 8 gigs of RAM, uh, i7 quad-core, 3.4 gigahertz. About a medium machine, medium low. It's nothing to write home to mom about, but um, it does the job, does the job well, and uh, it's stable. So the problem is, is I have 11 million polygons, and I'm trying to get a ambient occlusion map, and I know from multiple... Um, failures that if I press this button right here mask ambient occlusion I'm gonna get a, a, a progress bar here that says 543 minutes and then it's gonna crash so that's not acceptable um, if I reduce my uh, subdivision level down to seven it still crashes if I go to six it still crashes the best I can do is go to five and you can see how pixelated the polygons got let me turn off uh, poly painting you can see how 
level five is just not the fidelity and the quality that we're hoping for for a good ambient occlusion. Nevertheless, let's create it just so I can show you how, what I'm going to get. And I'll say mask. I'll increase my intensity here to like say four. And mask ambient occlusion. And you can see my progress bars going across. Okay, and, and then we want to say create alpha. And here it is in the window there. So I'm going to save this. Um, I'll export this. We'll call this uh, head ambient occlusion. Um, I'm going to call this level 5. And frankly, I can do a lot better with different techniques. Um, I'm going to stop the movie now and I want you to go watch my video on creating a projection in 3D Studio Max. And we're going to use a projection technique in Max between a low head, level 1 head, right here, which I exported out of ZBrush. This this head right here on the left has 717 polygons because it's the level one, and the one on the right here um, has 1.1 million polygons in it. And I can let's just see how many I got. I was a guess. I control A in in sub object mode. Let's see how many we hate we get. We have 2.83 million polygons. So what I'm going to do is a projection technique between the low and the high to get a much better ambient occlusion. Uh, that's another video. Um, so please watch that. Thanks for watching.